Hey guys, lovely to be with you all again today. We've moved into the kitchen to try and get the best light in these winter months. It's quite hard to get good light so just hope that you like our wee kitchen and that the videos will go well in this better light. Thanks for joining us today, thanks for all your emails, thanks for your wee comments and your wee words of encouragement. And if you disagree with me, just let me know that as well, because that's cool too. But we're going to be talking today from the Bible in Mark chapter 7. I want to give a wee shout out today to Demi and Casey and Jordan. God bless you girls. Hope you're enjoying your first day back at school. Think of all of you today back at school. Don't be giving the teachers too hard a time. If you're a teacher, I hope you had a good day too. If you're a mum or dad sending out your kids, maybe you had a wee rest today. I hope so till they all come back home again. We want to look at this little story today in Mark where Jesus is disputing, well, the Pharisees, the Jews, are disputing with Jesus on this business of washing your hands before meals. The Jews had all these elaborate rules about washing, they overdid it, washing their hands and plates and cups and everything and they just uh, went over the top and they noticed that Jesus and his disciples weren't going through all this elaborate ritual of washing and so they accused Jesus, they started to blame Jesus, they started to find a fault with Jesus and his disciples because they didn't go through all these washings of course it's good to wash your hands and I hope, I hope you do that before you have your meal. We're not saying that that's a bad thing. But these guys were going over the top and they were blaming Jesus because he didn't follow their tradition. You see they had taken God's commandments and instead of just keeping to them they formed all these wee rules and regulations and many of them they ditched God's commands for their own man-made rules and that's what angered the Lord Jesus in their approach to him. Well you know Jesus used this to teach a wee lesson. He was always using things that people said to teach the truth and to teach a wee lesson and Jesus said to these guys listen it's not so much filthy hands that defiles you he says you eat food and it goes right through to the waste and that doesn't defile you but Jesus said it's the heart, it's the filthy heart that's man's bigger problem and hey this is something that we have to think about guys Jesus is teaching us that our hearts are wrong Jesus says it's more important to think about your filthy words your filthy thoughts and your filthy deeds rather than your filthy hands. Jesus was teaching the people that what's wrong with men and women today is that it's the heart. The heart of the matter is the heart of the matter. You see our problem is our heart. The Bible teaches that all of us have a sinful, black, wicked, filthy heart. We come into the world with this wrong heart and if we just live as we are we're going to die with a wrong heart and be lost to God forever but what Jesus has come to do when he died on that cross he has come to give us a new heart he has come to wash our hearts clean he has come to give us a pure heart when we receive the Lord Jesus into our lives as our saviour then he puts the Holy Spirit within us he puts the nature of God in us he puts a new heart in us I've got a new heart today it's put there by Jesus it's a heart that thinks right it's a heart that speaks right and it's a heart that does right oh yes I've still got the old heart there too and sometimes these awful things still come out filthy thoughts filthy words filthy deeds but you know one day Jesus is going to take that 
awful old heart away forever and it'll just be me with my new heart that thinks right, that speaks right and that does the right things. Oh, even if we try and do our best, you know, sometimes these awful thoughts will come up and we think, where, where did those thoughts come from? They came from the wicked heart. Sometimes words, awful words come out and we say, where did that come from? I wasn't even thinking about that. Why did I say those awful things? Why did I hurt my friends? It comes from the old sinful heart that's within us. Jesus said the heart is wrong and Jesus said that we need a new heart. You know, all these things come vomiting out, the Bible says, of the old heart. You know, immorality and, and envy and, and greed and, and stealing and murder and, and all the awful things that we could think about and the awful things that we do to each other even when we don't want to do them. You know, you maybe have hurt somebody today. You're saying to yourself, why did I say that? Why did I do that? What was, what was I thinking? You know, all these things came from that old heart. Yes, we're born with the old heart. We live with the old heart. But the good news is that Jesus will give us a new heart. King David wrote about it in Psalm 51 and verse 10. He'd gone through a really rough time. He had fallen for a woman, a married woman. He had had his, her husband killed um, so that he could marry her because he had sinned with her and committed adultery. He tried to cover it all up, but God exposed it all and David's sin was brought out into the open. And in Psalm 51, when he's repenting before God for his awful sin, for his adultery and his murder and his deceit. He prays this prayer, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. And that's a good prayer to pray, to pray for the clean heart, to pray that the blood of Jesus will wash you from all your sins, to pray that he'll give you his spirit, that he'll give you the new heart, that you can begin to live for him and to think the right thoughts, to say the right words, and to do the right things. Thank you so much for being with us today. Trixie and I love you all very, very much. God bless you, and see you tomorrow. Big and small, beautiful. Oh. And wonderful to trust in grace through faith. But I'm asking to stay. For dark is light to you. Depths are high to you Far is near But Lord, I need to hear from you Being near, oh God